Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am here today with Jessica Fru, who is a mom, wife, ex-wife, and stepmom. She loves to take care of her family, her friends, and herself, and loves anything active, singing, working out, and spending time with family and friends. She has dedicated her work to her own healing and then in turn helping others heal as well. She has a really successful podcast called Husband in Law that get this, she records with her husband, Matt, and her ex-husband, Steve, like that cracks me up. But together (laughs) they are all working to spread the values of love, kindness, acceptance, understanding, respect, and appreciation as key tools for creating healthy relationships. So she's a perfect fit to have on here to talk all about the things because she has walked the walk personally and talked the talk professionally. So um, I'm just like to go into this, have this conversation. So welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, What I didn't mention is your whole thing is about like living life boldly, loudly, largely, like (laughs) you're just a force. Um, which I love so much. So we'll talk about that too. But let's just start with your personal story. Um, I think that because that's the kind of the kickoff of how you started doing the work that you do. Yeah. So I was married to my first husband for seven years. And about five years into that, we had a daughter together. So I get to experience the whole co-parenting thing after that. Um, But about a year into our marriage, he came to terms with the fact he was gay. And we were very open with each other about that and kind of decided, well, what do we want to do? Um, And he was not comfortable coming out. Like he didn't want to come out. He didn't want to leave our marriage. And so we stayed married. We were both really happy and enjoyed each other. And so we just decided to continue forward and see where it led us. Um, And I have to, you know, people are always like, well, weren't you angry and bitter when your marriage ended? And I'm like, well, I have to take some responsibility in that because I knew he was gay and that therefore this was a possibility, right? That maybe our marriage could end. And so um, seven years into our marriage, he did end up having an affair and we went through all that. We tried to make it work afterwards, but it was just a mess. It was, it was a mess. Um, So we got divorced and we actually ended up dating again post-divorce to try to make sure we made the right decision. Like we really wanted to be sure we, we made the right decision. Um, and that was a whole nother crazy mess, but I'm so glad we went through it because it gave us so much clarity and understanding of what we wanted as we moved forward past divorce. Um, and then I am now remarried and I've been married to my current husband for seven and a half years. So I feel like that's accomplishment. We've passed up both of our first marriages. (laughs) (laughs) I love when that happened too. I'm like, yes, it's so exciting. I, we hit our seventh anniversary. I was like, we did it. We did it. <laughs> um, and yeah, I have two stepkids now. I, we have the other extreme on my husband's side as far as dealing with exes. So we kind of get both sides. I mean, my we're close enough to my ex-husband that he actually works for my husband now. My husband owns his own business and he has hired Steve on to come work for him. And um, we do holidays together and we do weekly dinners as a family and we record a podcast together and all of these things that we're hoping to help other people in the podcast realm of it to see their lives differently and to live a bold life. Exactly like you were saying, I love living a bold life. And for me, it is loud. I'm bright. I'm, I'm loud. Um, but that isn't for everybody. I encourage people to understand what it is that works for them and to live boldly in that life. So if, if you are quiet, if you're reserved or if you're introvert, whatever it is that speaks to you, that you understand that so that you can live boldly. Um, Anyways, so we we do have both these dynamics that we get to speak to and that we understand that you have to figure out what works for you. This The great relationship we have on one side does not work for everybody. Um, and we do have boundaries on that side, but they look very different than the boundaries and relationship that we have with Matt's ex-wife. And, and either side of those, it's we do that for the kids, right? Like ultimately what that comes down to is it gives the kids safety and protection because they know what to expect on either end of those things. Um, And so I think those are just important things to remember when you're getting divorced, when you're co-parenting and going through all of those things, things to keep in mind. Okay, so much to unpack there. And I'm going (laughs) to wind us back to when you were talking about your first marriage, because I know that there is people out there listening, like, well, like, why would you even consider staying, you know, when you knew your husband was gay? Like, 
what was the thought process behind trying to make it work? Because I do think it's so relevant, whether you're soon to be spouse is gay or not gay, I don't think it matters. It, it's the like the process about trying to decide to stay when something isn't a good fit or isn't, you know, really going to work because the writing's on the wall for, you know, for different reasons. Yeah. And I think, you know, we stayed because we knew we were happy and like our needs were getting met in that time. Like, yes, that changed. And he wanted to be true to that side of himself. But um, well, and first and foremost, I think for him and both of us, but his view of it was we'd been raised in a very conservative church. So both of us came out of that in this very, I mean, we were married in our church and all of those things um, and went to, through all the steps of what we felt our life should look like, right? We were following those guidelines. And for him, it was very hard for him to think of going outside of that of that church realm and figuring out who he was in maybe a different light. And um, for me, at, I saw this opportunity to continue to love this man and to support him. Um, I saw all the good still in Steve, like him being gay didn't change anything. It just was something different that we got to work through. And everybody has something in their marriage that they get to work through, right? Like it's never easy. Um, and this was, this was our thing. And it really gave us the opportunity to understand ourselves. So I, and in a safe, a very safe place. And, um, I don't think many marriages get that even, even if your husband's straight or whatever, like that's something that you latch onto in any relationship. If you feel safe in that relationship, that's, that's worth holding on to until, you know, it wasn't serving us. And then we, we pivoted and figured out how to make it work after our marriage. Um, but yeah, we were happy in every sense of the word. People always ask me the number one question we get is, well, what about your sex life? Like, what about it? <laughs> and I'm like, that was there too. When you have a strong emotional connection, I think that really helps in helping you connect in other areas of your marriage. So we get that question so often. It always makes me laugh, but people are so curious about that. But it was all there. It was all working for us. Um, and so we continued forward until it didn't work for us anymore. Mm. It, so was it just a quick transition? Like, okay, this is the next phase of our life. Or did you guys go through some bumps along the way through your, to your divorce? Um, it definitely felt bumpy. I mean, I would say it happened quickly, but it was bumpy. We, we were really happily married. And I don't think either of us really thought it was going to happen this way, that, w that it was really going to end. And so it felt kind of sudden and it really felt sudden to everybody outside of our marriage, right? Um, nobody knew Steve was gay except like one couple we were really close to and then Steve's mom um, and my family had no idea. And so it, when he had the affair, I knew right away he had the affair and he opened up to me about a week after he had had it. But then from there, it was just, you know, this struggle of, well, what does this look like now? And he wasn't attracted to me anymore. And so that's when our sex life did kind of take a, take a hit and we couldn't figure that out. And, and I was hurting because that felt very personal, right? Like him not being attracted to me or wanting to have sex with me felt very personal. Um, and so all of these things kind of started falling apart while, and while in that we were still able to communicate, like somehow we still set aside or made a safe place where we could still express those hurt feelings in a way that wasn't damaging to the other person. So that was really key for us in being able to have a good relationship after the divorce. And really what it came down to for me was realizing, okay, my marriage is going to end. What do I really want my life to look like after this? I'd been shown all of these ways that divorce should look, right? We're growing up, all I saw, um, I, I wasn't, my parents are still married, but like my friends' parents or people at church who went through divorce, I only saw this one version of blame and anger and shame. And, and I just thought, I don't want this. Like that's where my issues come from getting a divorce. It's not that I'm ashamed of it. It's not that I um, don't accept that this is happening, but I don't want my life to look like this. So what do I really want this to look like? And how do I preserve that? And for me, it was really, and for Steve as well, it was preserving that idea that uh, we can create what we want. And if we're going to create that, we can't damage each other along the way. We can't hurt each other so much that we we are angry and bitter and we're allowed to feel the hurt and the pain and we accept that but let's let's keep moving forward in a way that's healthy. 
And that's hard stuff though. Like that. It is so hard. Yeah. That takes like putting aside the blame, putting aside the affair, putting aside all of those hurt feelings and kind of keeping your eye out into the future that, you know, you, you, you can't see it yet because it's not right there. Like that's really tough stuff. How long of a process did that take? You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like, well, you guys spend so much time together and then, and I'm like, that wasn't how it was in the beginning. Like, I really encourage people to take space and time to find yourself again. Right. Like, so I moved away. We were living in Oklahoma at the time, but we owned a house in Boise, which is where we were from. Um, well, mostly where I'd grown up and where my parents lived. And so I moved home to Boise. So we had a lot of distance between us for probably eight months, six to eight months of, of really just seeing each other every once in a while when Steve came to visit Penny or um, I flew down there once to pick up Penny because she had gone home with him to stay with him. And just things like that. There were, there were times we spent together like a weekend or whatever, but it wasn't real in your face. And yes, we talked to each other still, we still communicated, but there were lots of boundaries around that, right? Like we took time to find ourselves again in this reality. And even, uh, so he moved to Boise about six months later. So that's why I say it was about six months of like a lot of distance. And then even in that, we still made sure to put boundaries around our own time and set up a custody agreement for ourselves that worked so that we knew what to expect, our daughter knew what to expect, And um, we stuck to that because it gave us time to heal. I think that that's really important to figure out how that looks for you, because sometimes you just dive in to being really close co-parents and you lose yourself in that, right? Like you, you're dependent on this relationship still, and you haven't taken time to find who you are. Um, And other times you just go into it and separate so much that you can't come together and there's so much damage done. So it's really tricky in finding the balance and what works for you. But I really encourage people like, listen to yourself and what is calling to you. It's going to look different for everybody, but really find yourself again outside of this marriage and this relationship, because then you can show up better in that relationship in the long run, right? You do. If you figure out who you are and what it is you want, then you can create boundaries around that. Then you can figure out what feels healthy and right for you. Do you guys still stick to that schedule or are you flexible now? We are very flexible in our schedule. Um, And we actually like in our court documents and stuff, like I just have full custody and all of that. Uh, We decided it was easier to just kind of keep it simple, sign the papers and get it done. And Steve put a lot of trust in me in doing that. And um, And we, and so I wanted to respect that trust, right? I wanted to make it clear and still do that. Listen, this, this, this signature, this paperwork for us, isn't the end all like for our other relationship on Matt's side, it is like, we stick to that custody agreement a hundred percent of the time because otherwise things get hairy and difficult. Um, But Steve and I are very flexible and and a lot of it, you know, if somebody wants to take her for vacation, then we work that out. Um, if something's going on in my home, which happens more often than in his home, because it's just him at this point, um, I call him and I'm like, hey, I need you to come get Penny. Like, things are a little rough right now. Will you please pick her up? And he's like, I'm there. I will be there to get her. And I'm so grateful for that, that we have that relationship and that he trusts me that she's still good to come back to my home, that my home is a safe place. And um, so it really goes both ways of putting that trust in each other. But yeah, we we're pretty flexible around our, our custody agreement. I don't recommend that for everybody, but for us, it works. I think that that's a really good point because even though, you, you know, you said something that I've actually never heard before. And I, I actually, I agree a hundred percent with you that even though you are super flexible now, you had that initial period where you were by the book. And I think that 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 is so important in setting boundaries and s- starting to establish them because you're right when you have even parents who do it really well and they're able yeah. to have a flexible agreement and they jump right into that they're they're usually not setting boundaries and then something gets you know there's a hiccup along the way and that's you know it doesn't have to be really long term but it's just like practicing that res- that yes. boundaries and that respect in this different relationship. Yes. 
And I feel like you almost need to kind of reestablish that trust and respect, right? Like obviously something happened to end your marriage that that's been damaged some, no matter, I mean, even like, I feel like we left on good terms still, but there was still damage and pain and hurt. And so it was important to establish that respect and trust continuing forward and showing that we do respect each other's boundaries because it's huge. It does like we, we did that on the other side where we let things go and we, we were flexible and then it came back to bite everybody in the butt and it just was not a good thing. Um, and so now we've had to back step and say, okay, we're, we're setting these boundaries. We're going to stick to them until maybe there is more of that trust and respect established, but, um, that takes a lot of time. It can take is, a lot of time. Yeah. And this is a classic example of one size does not fit all just yes. because somebody else did something a different, a certain way and had a parenting plan that looked a certain way does not mean it's the right one for you. And it is, yes. you, you, it has to be so individualized. I mean, here you are and you have both. And usually people don't have that, yes. you know, it's kind of one or the other because of personalities yeah. that are involved, but you know, you're experiencing both of them. So, you know, it's really interesting to hear your insight as to when it's okay to be flexible and when you have to really be strict with boundaries. Yeah, a hundred percent. We really, we really get it on, on both those extremes. So let's talk about living boldly. Cause I know this is a big part of your work. Um, what does that mean to you? So living a bold life, like I was saying earlier, it means to me that you know who you are. So it begins with knowing yourself and knowing what it is you want. And this plays into all of the dynamics that we're talking about and all of the things in your life. But when you understand yourself and what it is you want, and I mean, not understanding what it is you wanted before, what it is you want in the future, necessarily um, having an idea of where you're going, but also being flexible and how that turns out, but understanding what it is that's important to you, what you value and not just like, well, I value love and I value honesty and respect, but having a firm knowledge of what that is and like putting those into sentences of what you value. But when you understand those things, then you get to set those boundaries. You get to show up in a way that is right to you. You have to be bold in doing those things because whether you are a quiet person or a loud person, it still takes guts to show up as yourself. It still takes it's still hard to be true to who you are. Um, it's It gets easier. And it once you realize, oh, this feels good, like it feels good to be true to who I am, then that process gets easier and it feels right. And you feel more confident and sure in living that bold life. Ah, I love that. So how does someone start? Like, wh what's your advice on what someone who, who says, okay, I want to live a bold life. Like, how do I figure out what that looks like for me? Yeah. So I always say you have to start by asking yourself powerful questions to get to know yourself. I, I firmly believe in asking yourself questions of things like, um, well, and I have a journal that goes through this every day of, okay, where was I uncomfortable? What felt right today and made me happy? Where was I uncomfortable? Why was I uncomfortable? How could I have taken more ownership in this situation to maybe feel more in control? Um, and, and this comes back to knowing yourself and then also taking ownership of your life, right? You made choices to get yourself here. And I'm not saying that this is all encompassing. There are things that happen to you. I understand that, but um, I'm talking about things where, you know, I, I made a choice to stay married to a gay man. So I'm going to own the fact that yes, he had an affair, which wasn't the best way to go about things, but it's what happened and it's where we were. And so I'm going to own that. I'm going to own this. And then I get to have control over my life and not feel like I'm the victim or that I'm playing into somebody else's, um, like I'm not letting them determine the trajectory of my life. So I really believe in those two things as a starting point, take control of your life and know who you are. So take ownership of your circumstances of where you're at and stop putting the blame on other people. Stop putting the blame on the situation instead, own it and move forward. Oh, that's so good. I love that. And I think that that is exactly how people either come out of their divorce um, excited about their future or looking in, at the opportunity that it has given them, even if they didn't want it, or the people who get yes. so stuck in the conflict and chaos and go back to court a hundred times because they're looking at, they're doing, they're blaming, they're playing the yes. victim. They're looking at other people to solve their, you know, their problems, their concerns, their fears, their uncertainties, all of that rather than look inward and say, okay, what can I do to fix this? What can I do to, to make sure I'm okay at the other end? So yes. That's, that's a hundred percent. And I, I feel like one of those things you touched on is that fear of 
okay, what does this look like for me now is, is debilitating for some people. And it does just get, it turns into this cycle of blame and, and playing that victim. And I think when you can identify what it is you're scared of in moving forward, then you can take control of it. And that was really for me, like, I remember at one point thinking, what is it that I'm so scared of about the divorce? Like, what is my biggest fear around this? And it was of course for my daughter, like I knew I would be okay, but it's how does this look for my daughter? And realizing that, I can create something that works for my daughter. We can have a relationship that works for her and it's going to be okay. You know, that's, that's awesome. I had, I was going through a breakup a long time ago and I remember calling up a friend all like, you know, boo hoo is me and her stopping me and saying, what are you afraid of? And that was like the mic drop moment because I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> I'm just pissed. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, th- those emotions keep you in a, in a place. And if you allow yourself yeah. to continue to like be on that hamster wheel of the anger and the like, well, I- I'm holding on to something that really sucks to begin with. And why? Like, what are you afraid yeah. of in the next chapter? What, what's, what are you afraid of? Like, if you choose something different? Yeah. And I think you learn from those feelings and emotions. Like you should embrace them for a minute and feel them and understand them, but then be willing to move forward. Don't just get stuck in that place of woe is me. And yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's talk about your podcast, Husband in Law. Um, how did that start? And give us a little insight as to what you do each each episode when you show up with your husband and your ex. <laughs> yeah. So it started a couple years ago. And honestly, before that, for a couple years, my husband and my ex-husband kept talking about starting like an Instagram handle or a YouTube channel or something that just showed their relationship. And um, it's funny because I think about it back then and they aren't nearly as close or they weren't nearly as close then as they are now, but I loved the idea. And I was like, it's so true. And the whole point was just to get people thinking about their relationships different. I mean, Matt and I are still very active members in a very conservative church. We're members of the Mormon LDS church, if you know what that is. And um, we're still active there. And Steve is gay and has embraced that lifestyle. And I'm so happy for him and love that side of him. But it, it people see it as so contradictory, right? And then the fact that we're exes and we, we all get along and whatever. So Matt and Steve had this idea of doing this and I, I heard him talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. I was like, this is never going to happen. <laughs> Of course. And yeah, yeah. And it's funny because they talked about starting businesses together. And I'm like, no, because then I will be the one in charge yeah. of it. So we're not doing this um, until there was one that I was like, yes, let's do this. And I felt for years that there would be a time that I could share my story to be able to help other people. I had seen it in like day-to-day life, talking to people at the gym, talking to my friends. I saw the impact that it had in just helping people rethink their life and their situations, right? Well, okay, if she can do this, then then I can too. I can rethink this thing, or maybe I should think differently about this thing in my life. And so I knew there was power there. And so I was like, okay, what's the next step to being able to share this on a bigger level? And um, I'm I'm okay at writing, but I knew that my thing was talking. Like I love talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I approached Steve, my ex. I said, Hey, I'm thinking about starting a podcast. This would be the premise of it. Like just sharing our stories. Um, are you in? And he was like, Whoa, like give me a couple weeks. I don't know about this. And the first time we sat down to record, he totally fell apart. Just it was interesting. Matt had never seen Steve like this. And I had, I had seen it in our marriage. Um, but we started recording and it was just like, he went white, like just totally shut down. And he's like, I can't do this. I feel so much shame around this. I feel all these things. And I'm like, that's fine. Like we don't have to. And then he took a couple of weeks again and he goes, he came back and he said, you know what? I just keep thinking about me when we were married and going through the divorce and even me today of how much this could have helped me to just hear somebody else's story. And he's like, so I'm in, like, I can do this. We're going to do it. And, um, and we did, and it's been really cool to see 
how it's brought us closer together and how it's helped other people. And we, our podcast is very different than most. I always say it's more like um, if you're listening to a true crime where you're like binging it because you want to find out what happens because we literally sit down and we're following a timeline of our story from when Steve and I were married to when Matt and his ex were married and just going through all of this and sharing our experiences of being married and Steve coming out as gay and getting divorced and all of these things um, that so many people go through. And maybe if you don't go through the same thing, you still go through similar things, have similar experiences and feelings around them. So that's really what we do. And the gist of our podcast is just putting our story out there and there are so many takeaways you can get from it. And we, we do touch on all of those takeaways, but it's really just kind of a story of what we've been through and, and helping people understand how they can rethink their relationships and their lives and take ownership of them. I mean, that's what I love about you because your story could have ended in a very different way. Like yeah. you could be a very different person right now. Had you taken this and twisted it and done something else to it internally, you know, and you could have shown up in a different way and you could have been holding on to the anger and all of those feelings that really keep people stuck. And you chose not to, and you are like this bright light in this, in this space and you laugh, but I'm so serious about it because I know that there's a lot of people out there who lit, who are, will listen and say, well, that that's not me. I can't do that. Like my ex is a real jerk or, or I was like my ex, you know, cheated on me. I can't do that. And you can, and your story is of yeah. one, like you get to choose to not be that other person. You get to be the version of yourself that is like you, that has the flowers behind her and is bold and bright and happy <laughs> and like choosing a, just a different, a different chapter. It's like the choose yeah. your own adventure. Like, which way do you yeah. want this to end? You want to, you know, you go down one path, it's, it's your head's getting chopped off. You go down the other path and there's rainbows and a pot of gold. And it's like, you get to choose. Yeah. And I think Renee, when you said that about people saying, well, this won't for work for me, or I can't do that because of this and this and this, and that goes back to that whole idea of placing the blame. And I understand that. I understand that sometimes it sounds so hard and like, you just want the other person to change, to take care of it, but that's never going to happen. Like that's just not life. You can only control what you can control. And while you don't have to have the same relationship as I have with my ex, I'm that's not what we're encouraging. You get the opportunity to show up in a way that works for you. And like I said, we've got both of these extremes. We understand that more than anybody. So I always, when people tell me, I can't do that, I can't, whatever, I'm like, okay. That's your, that's what you are telling yourself. And the more you feed yourself with that mindset, the more you are stuck there. Mm. Stop telling yourself that. Stop saying that I can't do that. Stop saying that, well, this would never work for me because these things work. Like it's not going to work exactly the same. It's not going to look exactly the same, but you get to take that control back when you start leaning into this mindset. Absolutely. Regardless of who your ex is, regardless of, you know, all of the things that they might've did or how horrible they were. I mean, absolutely. You get the control. So how do we find you, follow you, connect with you? You have a book that's out, do yes. all of your, drop all of your nuggets here. So we can, uh, anyone listening can reach out to you. Yeah. So I am on Instagram on husband-in-law. Um, I do have a personal one, but I don't post much there. So find us at husband-in-law. We're on in, any podcasting platform under husband-in-law. Um, and then I'm on Facebook under my name, but Bold Action Takers is my Facebook group. So if you're interested in taking bold action and finding out more about how this can work for you, uh, go find me there. I do coaching. I do have a book. It's just free plus shipping. You can find it at our website. Um, I also have a boldology journal that starts helping you break this mindset. So it starts instilling in you habits of asking yourself powerful questions so that you can start figuring out what it is that's really bothering you, what it is that really brings you joy, and how to break out of the mindset that's holding you back. So those uh. are some of the things we've got going. Love it. And you really are like a, uh, a shiny light in, in all of this space. Like I love your outlook so oh, much. Thanks. So that, everyone that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really are. Your posts Thank are you. the best. Everyone has to follow her on, uh, on Instagram. It's just, it's super, you're just fun. <laughs> thanks. We so, like to have a good time. <laughs> that's well, listen, that's what life's about. If you're not having fun, what's the point? Amen. <laughs> thanks Jess. Yes, thank you.